Welcome to Redemption Power Church. We are so excited to have you here. Our live broadcast would begin in just a little bit. Allow the Holy Spirit to move in you as you invest in the kingdom. You can pay your tithe or give your offerings online at redemptionpowerchurch.org or on our Redemption Power Church app. If you are interested in starting or joining a Power Connect group, kindly send us a direct message. Stay tuned for a powerful message. Amen. Welcome to Redemption. And those of you that are joining us online, welcome to Redemption Power Church. Be sure to share the feed and start a watch party. This past Tuesday was a very special day for us. It was our very own Pastor Kimber Hanshi's birthday. Amen. And we are honored to celebrate today with her and as her sons and daughters as we have gathered here. Uh, to honor her not only as our spiritual mother, but also as our pastor. And I want to start by looking at Proverbs 31. So I invite y'all to read along with me. They're going to be projecting that up there because I'm reading from the Passion Translation because it's so beautiful. Who could ever find a wife like this one? She is a woman of strength and mighty valor. And I love the footnote here because it broke down the Hebrew and it talked about that description was used in connection with military prowess. A warring wife, yeah. mighty, full of integrity, ability, and strength. Yes, amen. Mighty like an army. Right. Pastor Kimber, we know you've been faced with some difficult decisions recently. Right. But everything that you have done yes. was out of necessity and out of love to protect the legacy that you and Bishop established back on August the 5th, 2000. And through everything, your character and integrity has never wavered. Amen. No matter what you were experiencing personally, you consistently put God first because it's who you are. Yes. It's who in season and out of season. Yes. And so it was like when all hell broke loose against your family and against your house, that muscle memory kicked in because that's who you are. You've already cultivated that relationship. And you inspired me to have that kind of relationship. Yes. She is full of wealth and wisdom. The price paid for her was greater than many jewels. Her husband has entrusted his heart to her, for she brings him the rich spoils of victory. All throughout her life, she brings him what is good and not evil. Now, the footnote here was talking about how the Lord has great confidence in her and that Jesus would not be ashamed to display the virtuous bride to the world. Pastor Kimber has never been ashamed of him. You have stood before us, and you have stood before everyone, and you have bared your soul. And everything that you said and everything that you did brought glory and honor to yes. him. Yes. And in the natural, your husband, in his sound mind, he entrusted his whole heart to you. Yes. Yes. Amen. He, not only that, but his ministry and his legacy. He ordained you because he knew that you were ready and That's more right. than capable. That's right. Amen. Yes. She searches out continually to possess that which is pure and righteous. Pastor Kimber, you have been so diligent and careful about every word that comes out of your mouth. That nothing is said out of emotion, but the very breath of God that has been breathed in you yes. and through you for his people. Yes. Yes. She delights in the work of her hands. She gives out revelation truth to feed others. She is like a trading ship bringing divine merchants from the divine supplies from the merchant. And there was a note here about the hands and the five fingers and the fivefold ministry. And there's been so many words that has been spoken over Pastor Kimber about the different levels of the ministry that she's walking into. Yes. And I really wish I had time to reach out a transcription of one, particularly about the prophetic realm that she's walking into. This was not only confirmed by her spiritual father, but I have seen this vividly take place with my own eyes and yes. come to fruition. That's right. Not just here in the church right. and at the altar, That's but right. in hospitals, uh -huh. in Amen. doctor's offices, come on. Come on. in Amen. coffee shops with perfect strangers as she is obedient to move out and speak what God has given yes. her. Yes. Yes. Amen. The verse also talked about her delight to equip others. And even on the most difficult of days, First Lady, anytime you heard anything about what your spiritual sons and daughters were doing, immediately the delight in your voice was evident. As soon as you heard about anything they were doing with the homeless or outreach or soul winning, those were the cool drinks of water that your soul longed for. Amen. That was your delight. Uh -oh. Even in the night season, she arises and sets food on the table for hungry ones in her house and for others. You set spiritual food on the table as you intercede and you labor in 
bread to the night. You arise with anointing to feed and bless the people of God, not only for your home, but for God's people who we take it in turn and go feed others. She sets her heart upon a nation and takes it as her own, carrying it within her. She labors there to plant the living vines. She wraps herself in strength, might, and power in all her works. Yes, and I spoke here about the vineyard being a metaphor for the local church, but did you see how passionate she was about bringing forth fruit and about life? And everything that Pastor Kimber has done has been with that very specific purpose of soul winning. Yes, every aspect of service, even down to tithe and offering, and every ministry that is operating under this house, that is their focus. That is their goal. Yes. And it's because you asked for that heart of Christ that you also have a heart for people. And the very same people that you carried within you, what you see now before you as redemption, they had to be carried before it could be birthed. Right. You labored in that planting right. seed. Amen. And now you have a mature offspring that is beginning to bear fruit on yes. its own. Amen. She tastes and experiences a better substance. Wow. And her shining light will not be extinguished no matter how dark the night. Her shining light, her lamp, her prayer life. It overcomes her circumstances, even when it looks like darkness is prevailing. Come on. She stretches out her hand to help the needy, and she lays hold of the wheels of government. She is known by her extravagant generosity to the poor, for she always reaches out her hands to those in need. And again, we see here the fivefold ministry. She is not afraid of tribulation, for all her household is covered in the dual garments of righteousness and grace. Amen. Her clothing is beautifully knit together, a purple gown of exquisite linen. Wow. You don't have to worry about Savannah and Sierra and Seth. Amen. The Hebrew translation for this verse says that everyone in your household is covered by the scarlet blood of everyone. Jesus Christ. Everyone. Amen. Amen. Grace has brought that righteousness not only to those in your home, but to the spiritual children under your ministry. Yes. Amen. Even her works of righteousness, she does for the benefit of her enemies. I love the note here because it talks specifically about surrendering your enemies to him. And that's hard to do because that means even the ones that not only stabbed you in the back, but they continue to cut right. and inflict yeah. pain like they wanted yeah. the death of right. a thousand cuts. Yeah. Right. And then they put some salt on there and then heap some feces up on that just right. for extra measure. Right. Right. But you know what, First Lady, not only did you surrender them to God, you forgave them. Yes. 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 You reached out to them with grace right. Right. and with love. You prayed for them, uh -huh. and you even thanked God for them, and Amen. you trusted that, like Paul, at least they're preaching the gospel. Amen. Amen. Bold power and glorious majesty are wrapped around her as she laughs with joy over the latter days. And I don't know how many of you have heard her laugh. I love First Lady's laughter. <laughs> God gave you that beautiful sense of humor because he loves the sound of your laugh. Yes. It gives him joy to hear you laugh. No yes. matter what the circumstances that are going on in your life, the joy of the Lord shines through you. Yes. And that part about the joy over the latter days, I don't know about y'all, but that sounds like Job 42 to me. Yes. And it's coming. Yes. It is coming. Yes. And your latter will be greater. Yes. Her teachings are filled with wisdom and kindness as loving instruction pours from her lips. And another translation says she opens her mouth carefully and lawfully. And it's because you take great care to make sure that everything that you say is in his perfect order that you are able to pour such wisdom and kindness and loving instruction into us. Yes. Amen. She watches over the ways of her household and meets every need they have. It's also translated that she's the watchman over her house and her family. Yes. And her sons and daughters arise in one accord to extol her virtues. Yes. And her husband arises to speak of her in glowing terms. There are many valiant and noble ones, but you have ascended them all. Charm can be misleading, and beauty is vain and so quickly fades. But this virtuous woman lives in the wonder, awe, and fear of the Lord. She will be praised throughout eternity, so go ahead and give her the credit that is due. For she has become a radiant woman, and all her loving works of righteousness deserve to be admired at the gateways of every city. And that is what we are doing today. Your sons and daughters rising up, united, to give credit where credit is due, and to wish you, our spiritual mother and our pastor, Kimber Hanshaw, a very happy birthday.
offering and also get ready to honor our spiritual mother, our pastor, Kim Berenci. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother Valentine is holding the basket for the tithe and the offerings. And uh, Sister Rose, Dickon Rose, is holding the basket in which, in which we're going to honor our first lady. Amen? Amen. And from everything Sister Alisa has just said, and from your own place, from your own heart, who you know first lady to be and what she has poured into your heart, I want you to come and honor her from that place. Amen. Amen. The Bible says to give honor to whom honor is due. Amen. And I don't know about you, but this woman right here, yeah. man, she deserves the whole world's honor. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because you know and I know what she has meant to, to us, what she is to us, what she has done for us. Amen. 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 And so come now with your tithe and your offering and also come and honor our first lady. Praise God. Amen. And I know some of you have envelopes with who, you know, in which you wrote some notes. Also bring those at this time and put them in this basket right here. And we also have the ability to give electronically. For those who are streaming online, you can go on uh, redemptionpowerchange.org on our website or you can download the app and give there as well. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for blessing your people with sin, Father. We thank you for blessing them, my God, with the love of God. We hope they honor your servant, Father. I thank you right now for open doors upon them. I thank you for favor upon them. I thank you for blessings upon them. In the name of Jesus, I thank you because the devourer has been rebuked of their sake. Father, I thank you right now. My God, because you opened the windows of heaven and you're yes. pouring out a blessing yes. upon them. My God, such a blessing that they'll not be able, they'll not be able to over contain yes. in the name Thank of you. Jesus. Yes. The Bible says, press down, yes. shake it together, yes. run it over yes. in the favor of God. Yes. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise and you may... <laughs>
all week just really, this is the sermon I was going to preach two weeks ago. <laughs> and the Lord was like, hold up, hold up. We're going to change channels like the night before, like the night before. But don't you know he loves y'all that much? Oh, He's yeah. like, hold on. It's something sure else. It Plus, I also know he likes to test me. Yes. So, okay, he's got a lot of confidence in me, obviously. But um, this morning, I'm going to talk about something that's familiar, but I pray and I believe that God is going to use this to, to speak to somebody exactly where you are, because I love how they, he does that. Yes. I'm not good at multitasking. A lot of y'all know that. It's a joke. But um, y'all know my, my mind is like literally has to be on one channel and don't even mess with me because I go to another channel really quick. But um, God is an awesome multitasker. Yes, yes. And yes, I'm so glad you. he is. So what I'm going to speak to you today about is in Genesis chapter 32. We're all familiar with this story. It's the story of Jacob. But I'm hoping that uh, God uses this like he did when he spoke spoke it to me, and I pray this every time I get it in front of y'all, that I pray that I speak it with not any emotions, but only clearly the voice of God, and clearly by saying no dot, no cross T that comes from me, yes. but literally I speak it as he gives it to me, Amen. Amen. and so I want to talk to you today, and I want you to turn to your neighbor right now, and I want you to give him a high five and just tell him, or you can do a little fist bump if you want to try and be cool. But, um, by the way, I'm 55, and someone told me this, and it made me, I, I have to share it, but they said, you went, you're going to go to sleep tonight at 9, you're going to wake up in the morning at 10, and I was like, oh, I love that, so, so I'm, I'm 55, um, and I praise the Lord for every year he's given me, and especially for how he's allowed me to minister and work in his ministry, I love it, and I love y'all.
portion right. of yeah. everything right. that yeah. anybody else gets, he's right. getting double. Right. right, that's right. So he lies to his father after this, and he tricks him into giving him Esau's blessing. So not only did he steal Esau's birthright, now he's stealing the blessing. And the blessing in biblical terms is this. It came from the father. The father would literally lay hands on that son. Esau has lost his vision. He right. cannot see. So with the help of his mama, he connives, he tricks, he lies again to his daddy um, and convinces his father that he's Esau. He steals the blessing. The blessing is very important because in biblical terms, God honored that blessing. Right. Yeah. It was literally a blessing passed down legacy-wise, generation to generation it was passed down. And so that was passed down to, um, to Jacob by a cheat. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. He tricked him. Okay? So God still honors it. So for years, his twin brother is after him. He's wanting to get him. He's wanting to take revenge on him. And can y'all blame him? No. I mean, I would want to hurt him, right? <laughs> I said, I told someone earlier, I've got my own little sign language for this. So Seth knows when I do this. He knows what I'm thinking. <laughs> but he knows what I'm going to say. Um, but I always say, you know, there's a thug inside of me. Yeah. <laughs> and y'all don't want to see that thug. That oh. thug will take these red stilettos off, throw them down, pop my nails off, get my hair back. It's about to go down. Right. Because I try, I try, I try to stay clean up. But every now and then, somebody, not none of y'all, ain't going to be it, will test me and I'm just like, Jesus, help me keep my thug. Sometimes it's one hand because it ain't so bad. But sometimes y'all going to test me to the next limit and it's like two. So, so now we see Esau. And Esau's thug is off the leash. And yeah. Esau is coming after his brother. Yeah. And for years, he's trying to hunt him down. So Jacob goes, runs to his uncle, and he stays there. And that's where he lands. That's where he stays. He's at his uncle Laban's house. He's hiding out. And um, now God is telling him, okay, it's time to go. It's time to pack your bags, get your wife, get your children. It's time to go home. I'm sending you back to the country. The place where you stole from, right. the Come place on. where you robbed your brother, you yeah. lied to your father, Come you're going to go back. And to get to your promise, everybody hear me this morning, to get to your promise, you're going to have to face your past. Now, some of you this morning, um, you know, we don't ever like to do that, right? We'd rather right. just do like he did for years and bury it, hide right. it from it, right. uh, not acknowledge it, don't even deal with it. Right. You know, if it's out of sight, out of mind. But there's a time and a place that God says it's time for you to stand up and face what you did. Right. Now, that might mean writing a letter of apology. Uh -huh. That might mean owning it instead of, you know, sitting there and excusing it or blaming somebody else. But Jacob had to go back through a country that his, his brother now owned yeah. to get to his promise. He had to walk straight through. Come on. So here he is. He sends his message. And he sends his messengers to his brother, and he's trying to see, is it peace? Is it going to be reconciliation? Yeah. Is it going to be uh, peace? What is going to happen here? I know I want peace with you, brother. Right. I know I've wronged you, but I want to make peace now. Yes. Okay? Come so on. he is sending his messenger. The messengers return. And when the messengers return, you see, let me just say this here. See, when a fight comes from your enemy, or the adversary. You kind of know it and you kind of expect it's going to happen, right? right? Ain't nobody going to get their feelings hurt when it's somebody you already know they don't like you. Right. Come on. Right. Come on. They hope you fall. Right. Come on. They want to see you like fall on your face, That's get right. fired, lose this, lose your money, lose your kid. That's the kind that don't shock you. Right. But when the fight comes from your family, come on. Oh my God. Yeah. My God. When the fight come comes, from somebody that can cut you to the core, cut you straight to the core, yeah. that's a whole nother level. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Because it would trip you up because it messes with your head, right? Yes. yes. So the messengers return and they're telling him, we gave your brother the message. Jacob, 
He don't look so good. He's heading his way with 400 men. Ooh. Now, I don't know about you. That don't sound like he's coming in peace. Does it sound like he's coming in peace? Right, right. It sounds like he's coming to break Jacob in some pieces. Yeah. So his thug is off the leash. I need a shirt, by the way. Y'all please yeah. call <laughs> So this causes Jacob serious anxiety. Yeah. And this is something. I read this scripture. And oh, my gosh. It just like neon, you know how sometimes you're reading the Word of God and it's as if the Spirit has already highlighted some things for you. Yes. Yeah. Seen, right? yes. So this really was highlighted in my spirit because it spoke to me. Because now Jacob is going off through his mind and he's going, this is going to be bad. It's about to go down. Yeah. I'm about to fall. I'm going to die today. Mm -hmm. And so he cries out to God because he says this in verse 7. Verse 7 of, of chapter 32 in Genesis says, He was gripped with fear when he heard the report, to the point of panic. Another version says, He was literally immobilized with fear. Now, many of you that are even watching, and those of you in here today, you know that there's a point, there's a place that you can get to. There's things that you can go through that sometimes it gets you in such a way that you are so afraid that, you know, you can pray, you can try to get the Word of God, but then you get your head. And you begin to let the enemy take your insecurity, take what you know you deserve. And he begins to beat you up, torment you, torture you, put you in chains with fear. Right, right. Okay? Till it immobilizes you. I go. So I have a question right now. Let me ask you this question. Who is your Esau? Right. Come on. Right. right. What is your Esau? What is it that every now and then you feel it, you hear it, the enemy uses it against you? It comes back to haunt you. Right. It comes back to intimidate you. Come on. It comes back to call you out mm. for your past. Yes, my Lord. To blackmail you with your shame. Yes. Who is your Esau? Hmm. Who is your Esau? My God. And that very thing will keep you tied up and bound. And it's funny how that happens. It usually takes place when you've really made your mind up on Sunday. Uh -huh. You know? God's really dealt with you, and here it is Sunday, and you're like, God, forgive me. I'm going to do it right. I'm going to give you 100. I'm tired of giving you 50. I feel you calling me up higher. I feel you wanting me closer to you, wanting to walk into that purpose. You feel that quickening inside of you, that God is trying to wake that up inside of you. Can anybody relate this story? Yes. 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 And the mind game of fear over faith mm -hmm. begins to happen. Right. Now, you know you're a man or a woman of faith. But when fear steps in the door, right. it moves all of that out of the way. Because then it begins to speak to you on a different level. Amen? Amen. So the failures that you've been hiding, right. the things that you've been running from for uh -huh. years that you did in your past, uh -huh. Uh -huh. God is saying to you today, and I want you to tell your neighbor, he's telling you, today's the day to stop running. Today is the day that you're going to face it. You're going to face the devil today, right? Are you ready? Come on. I say, are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Genesis 32, 9 through 12. This is the longest prayer prayed in the book of Genesis. Jacob prays this prayer right now because he is in a desperate, dire situation. He is so desperate that he begins to cry out to God. It's funny how. You can go through certain situations. You can go through certain times. And you, you're too busy to talk to God. Right, right. You're too busy because you you know you got all the kind of stuff going on and you're trying to chase the dollar. You're trying to clock in nine to five. You're trying to get your kids to soccer practice. You're trying to do this, trying to do that. And at the same time, you leave no room for God except now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord, my son King. Well, I said my prayer. Good night, everybody. Come on. But then there's times that you go through desperate seasons. Yes. Uh -huh. It's in those desperate seasons that you get real. Yes. It's in those seasons of desperation that you really and truly humble yourself and you really and truly begin to cry out to God. Come on. Because you know the only way out of this 
is only if he gets you out of this. That's right. Come on. You ain't going to get yourself out of this, right? Come on. So we see Jacob, and it's his first wrestling match. It's his wrestling match with God. It's his wrestling match with his purpose. It's his wrestling match with his promise. It's his wrestling match with fear and faith. Come on. And he cries out to God. And in verse 9 through 12, here we go, and I want you to pay attention to this scripture here. Then Jacob prayed. Let me say that one more time. Then you prayed. I pray. Then you prayed. Then Jacob prayed, O oh God of my father Abraham. Now he's, he's reminded God about, I got a lineage here of faith. Yes. God of my father Isaac. Can y'all feel a little preach? Yes. I can't do that. I could, but I ain't going to show out. So, God of my father Isaac, Lord, here we go. Listen, listen. You said to me, go back to your country and your relatives, and I will make you prosper. So he's reminding God, you gave me a promise, and I'm going to be obedient. I, I'm heading back that way. You see me. I'm walking. I'm in transition. I'm in obedience. But God, here we are, verse 10. I am unworthy. Here we go. He's falling down. He's humble. I'm unworthy of all the kindness and the faithfulness that you have shown your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed the Jordan. But now I have become two camps. Now I want to show you something right here. I'm going to stop for a little bit. And then I'll continue with verse 11. Right here, he's not only saying, God, I remember. Because see, sometimes you've got to do that. Not so much for God, but for yourself. So he's reminding God of his promise. But he's also reminding himself of what God's already done. Come on, right. Come on. Yeah. He said, you know, I came out of that same country. Right. All I had was my staff. Yes, I was in the Jordan. Right. Now I'm going back and you have blessed me. You've increased me. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. Come on. And I'm being obedient. So verse 11, save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid. He will come and attack me. And also the mothers with their children. So it's his whole family right now that he's crying out for. But you have said, you have said, oh God, I will surely make you prosper. And I will make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. Well, it sounds to me, Jacob, he's trying to remind himself two times. He said, God, you remember your promise to right. me. He opened the prayer with it. Into the prayer with him. Right, yes. And I think he's not just trying to remind God, because the first one he reminded God. The second time he said it, I believe he was trying to remind himself. Right. He's right. like, if I'm dead, there can't be no children, there can't right. be no descendants, right. like the sand of the sea, because I'm going to be gone. Right. All the children and the, and the mothers are going to be gone. Come so, on. how can your promise be fulfilled? Yes. So, he's wrestling. Do y'all hear it? He's yes. wrestling. Yes. With his fears. He's wrestling with what he knows he deserves. Yep. Yep. And he's crying out to God for him to intervene. Mm -hmm. So I believe this. I believe that he's pleading with God to protect him and his family from his brother's wrath and his vengeance. But he's saying this now. He's saying, God, I trust you, but let me see. See, a little bit of Jacob, his thug, his thug yeah. coming out of, off the leash a little bit. He said, just in case. You don't protect me. Mm -hmm. I think what I'm going to do. Here he is. He goes into the conniving part. Does he really trust God? Come on, y'all tell me. Oh. So when you got a backup plan, are you really trusting God? Are you still trying to lean on God? You still try to figure it out yourself. You still think you know better than God. Come right. on. Right. And so we see Jacob here, and he's going, just in case Esau decides to follow through with his vow to kill me. And all of my descendants, I'm going to separate my possessions. Yes. See, he's smart now. I have to give it up now for Jacob. Yes. That was good. <laughs> that was good right there. So he sends one camp out to meet Esau. Yes. And it's as a peace offering. And then he keeps his children, his bloodline, his mothers of his children. Yes. And he sends them along with their servants over across Jabbok. Now, interestingly enough, in verse 22, when it says that night Jacob got up, he took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. Jabbok means empty. Come on. It means empty. Come on. The 
very next verse. Here we go, verse 24. So Jacob was left alone. Right. Hear me. Let me just stop here for a second. Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him till daybreak. It is in this emptying out place. Emptying out place where God will come and he will meet you face to face. And here's the thing. You're alone. See, on these times, I don't know about you, there's certain seasons you can have a lot of people around you to encourage you and support you, but you still feel like you're alone. Right. You're still oh, wrestling with oh, oh, yeah. your purpose. Yes. You're still yes. wrestling oh, with right. God's promise, right? So we find him alone, and it's midnight. And those midnight fights are the most damaging, the most hurtful, the loneliest, the worst kind of fight. Because you're not wrestling with man anymore. Right. Right. Jacob knew how to wrestle with man. He knew yeah. how to get out of it, didn't right. he? Right. He knew how to connive his way out, talk his way out. Yeah. But now he's wrestling with God. Now he's wrestling with his purpose. Mm -hmm. And God wants all of you. Yes. See, Jacob... He don't want part of you no more. Come on. That's not good enough. Come on. That was good enough back then. Right. But to go to the next level, Jacob, he wants all of you. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. He wants all of you because Jesus Christ is going to come through your lineage. Right. Yes. Right. You're going to birth, literally birth, the nation of Israel. Yes. Through the, tri the tribes, the 12 tribes, yes. they came from Jacob. They right. were his sons. Yes. Yes. His sons. Great purpose. Yes. Each of you. Great purpose. Yes. Great purpose. He wanted every part of his heart, every part of his life. These fights come to you when you least expect it. When you feel vulnerable, when you feel lost sometimes, come confused. On. It's dark. Come on. You don't know up from down. You don't even know if God's hands on you anymore. Mm. You question everything. And it is in this empty place, this lonely place, where every single thing that has been standing between you and God, you and your purpose, you and your call, you and your promise is completely moved. Every distraction, every idol, everything that stands between you and Him is all moved out of the way. And so as Jacob is wrestling, and it's the fight of his life, he's finally come to the end of his self. See, I've had those kind of matches before. It's when you totally say, okay, I can't figure this out. Yeah. I, I don't know how this is going to come out for me, for the good. I mean, you, you go there because you have to empty yourself out. And finally, he's at the end of himself. There's no more tricks. There's no more plots. There's no more scheming. He can't lie his way out of this. It's just him and God in the darkness at midnight. Come on. During the fight, the angel of the Lord touched Jacob's thigh. And it was twisted out of place. I love this. See, Jacob grabbed the heel. Do y'all remember the birthing? Yes, yes. He grabbed the heel, but God will grab your thigh. Oh my God. Oh my God. The reason he does that, this is very interesting. The hip socket is one of the strongest parts of the human body. Yes. Oh my God. God dislocated. God broke the strongest part of his flesh. My God. My God. He needed to break the part of him that would cause him to lean mm. on him. Come on. Come on. Not try Come to on. walk by himself anymore. Not try to let Jacob figure it all out. Come on. He needed to lean totally, completely on God. Uh, that's good. It was interesting because I was actually studying and I was going through this last night and all of a sudden I remembered something and Seth doesn't know this and I'm going to tell him something he doesn't know. One of Seth's injuries that he received when he was hit and ran over nine years ago, we just celebrated his rebirth day. Um, one of the injuries he received was he actually had his hip socket fractured. So where that ball joint goes in, that whole bone was fractured. He couldn't put weight on that. He could not put weight on it. They were afraid it would break. And as I read
read this, I was like, wow. Because if I can say anything, I watched a young man become a man of God because of the breaking, because right, of that right, accident, right, because right. of what happened to him. Right, right. And so Jacob is now given this injury that is going to prevent him from being able to win in his own strength. Uh-huh. Because it hurts when you get that part of you, the strongest That's part right. of you. Yeah. Jacob is humbled now because he can't manufacture his victory. Right. He can't trick it and make it happen. Come on. He can't right. manipulate his way out Come of this on. battle. Yeah. Come it's on. not going to happen. Genesis 32, 25 through 26 says, When the man saw, and they say this is the angel of the Lord, and they also say it's the pre-carnate of Christ. What that means is, you know, Christ hasn't come to hasn't right. been birth yet, right? right. right. But he says, and this is, of course, historians that say that that's the precarnate man right. form of God himself. And so when the man saw, or the angel of the Lord is another version it says, he could not overpower him. You think he couldn't overpower him? Yeah. He was enjoying this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. He was enjoying this. When he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. And Jacob replied, I love this. I will not let you go until you bless me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Now he's already been injured, right. but he's still holding on. Yes. And he said, I'm not letting go of my promise. I'm Come not on. letting go of my, mess, my blessing. You know, see, I fought with you all night. Right. I fought with you at midnight. Come on. I had a hold of you at 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. Yes. This fight has been going on a long, long right, time. Right, you right. know, I might get tired. I don't know about any of y'all. Right. Has, has anybody ever fought for like, what, six, seven hours straight? <laughs> yep, yep. No, because you know after about 30 minutes, y'all have pulled somebody's weave out. Y'all have pumped a few nails. Y'all have grabbed somebody's yeah. eyes. Y'all both bleeding. Uh -huh. Y'all both hobbling like, hold oh, yeah, on. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Okay, I'm about to tap out here. Yes. Both of y'all are done. Y'all have exhausted yourself, right? Right, right, right. That's Not right. here. Jacob wouldn't quit. Jacob wouldn't give up. Mm -hmm. So Amen. we see 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4, 5, 6. The day is breaking. Yes. Come on. Come He's been on. fighting a long time. Yes. That's some stamina right there. Not to quit <laughs> when you feel like it. Not to quit when you're weary. Mm -hmm. You just know you got to hold on just a little longer. Yeah. Let me just tell you that right now. Tell your neighbor, hold on just a little bit longer. Hold on. Fight a little bit longer. Keep fighting for it. Tell your other neighbor, fight for it. Fight for it. Come on, fight for it. Fight for it. Fight for it. Come on. He said, I'm not giving up now until you bless me. Then I'm going to let you go. Mm -hmm. wow. Now give me my blessing. Yes. 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 Give me my blessing. Yes. Wow. If you want it bad enough, you're going to have to fight for it. Yes. yes. That's good. If you want it bad enough, you're going to have to fight for it. Or you're going to tap out right before you're about to win. Uh-huh. Yes. So you know you're weary. You know you're tired. But you got to get back in the fight. Yes. Amen? Yes. Yes. you got to get back in the fight. Amen. Genesis 32, 27. And the man asked, what is your name? Mm. What is your name? Jacob replied. Jacob, he answered. But he might as well reply, liar. Because right. the other time in Genesis uh, he that right. he was asked, what is your name? He was his father. And he told him he was his brother. Yes. He gave him his brother's name. He lied. Come on. Right. Come on. So here he is. And the man, the angel of the Lord, he knew his name, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> but this is a different kind of fight. Because this is the fight of his life. Yeah. This is the fight of his identity. The fight of his mm. destiny. Come on. What is your name? Jacob, he answered. And the angel of the Lord said, I love this. I see now Jacob's face to face with God and face to face with himself. Genesis 32, 28 said, Then the man said, or then the angel of the Lord said, Your name will no longer be Jacob. No longer are you going to be a liar, a manipulator, a conniver, a trickster, a thief. No longer is your name Jacob, but Israel. Amen. Because you 
you have struggled, you have wrestled, you have fought, you held on tight with God and with humans and have overcome. Glory. Here and there, yeah. you overcome because you kept fighting. Yes. You overcome, Jacob. You got my respect, man, because you didn't quit when you felt like it. Come on. You didn't tap out and you kept on. Yeah. You Come kept on. on. You were hurting, you were broken. You didn't tap out. You kept yes. fighting. Thank you. You kept pushing through That's it. Good. Come on. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And because of this, he was emptied out of his past identity. Mm. And now he can step into his destiny. Hallelujah. Glory. I like that. Glory. Glory. His past identity. And now he can step into his destiny, his true identity, his real name, the way God sees him, the way God always Amen. saw him. He has transformed into now a prince. Amen. He has transformed from the way others seen him, Amen. from the way his mama, his daddy saw him, what they called him his whole life. Mm. I believe this. I believe because Jewish custom is if you name somebody, it's because it's, it's who they are. Yep. Right. I mean, they make a big deal about it. Yeah. You don't just get a name. Your name describes who you are. Yes. Yes. Yep. It's your identity before they ever meet you. Right. You say your name and then you say, I am the son of. Here's... Thank you. I love that music. <laughs> that was perfect. Uh, anyway, for you on Facebook, we just had a little uh, intro. But let me get back to that. Okay, so, so Jacob is now meeting face-to-face -face his true identity. Yes. Because God is, is telling him, you know, what they named you, I believe Jacob acted out. That's he, right. Look. It's a label. That's he's right. He's called yeah. Jacob. Right. Yes. He's yes. called the neighbor. Yes. What yes. else is he going to do? When yes. your mama says that's who I believe you right. are. Right. When your daddy says that's who that's I believe right. you yes. are. Come on. What choice Amen. does he have when everybody Amen. that he introduces Amen. himself to you goes, oh, the neighbor. Oh, I better watch out for you. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Right. And now God Good. says this is who you were always meant to be, Jacob. Yes. yes. You were always meant to be a prince. You were always meant to be a man of peace. Come on. An overcomer, a ruler, a man of God, a woman of God. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You're no longer the abuser. You're no longer the liar. The, the blesser is who you are. Too. Amen. You're no longer the drunk, the cheat, the adulterer. You're the worshiper. Come on. Come you're on. the prayer warrior. Come yeah. on. Yeah. You're no longer the one who causes pain. But now you're the one that speaks yes. peace and brings healing. Yeah. 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 Praise God. Glory. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm closing, and I want to say this. I want to just encourage you today, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter how tired, weary you are, just keep fighting. Yes. 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 Just keep fighting. Amen. Hallelujah. If kids are acting a fool, say it with me. Keep, keep fighting. fighting. Keep, keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. If your marriage is messed up, Keep fighting. If your money is messed up, keep if fighting. If your health is bad, keep, keep fighting. fighting. If you fall, keep, keep fighting. fighting. Get back up. Yes. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Amen. 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 Glory. So no matter how many times you fall or get knocked down, get back up. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Amen. Yes. And let me remind you of this, and you know it. You're not fighting alone because God, God of angel armies, is fighting for you and with you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now every head bowed, every eye closed. Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Those of you who are watching via Facebook, let me just speak to you right now. You may feel like you have blown it a thousand times. You may feel like you have stepped into this identity because everybody's labeled you, everybody's called you a mess up, an addict, a fool, no matter what it is. That they've called you. It doesn't matter. Right now, right now is your moment of destiny. This is the moment that God, your Father, your Creator looks at you and He calls you by name. Yeah. It's what He's always called you. You are my son. You are a prince because you are a child Hallelujah. of a monarch, the Most High God, King. That's who you truly are. Pick yourself up. Because he is reaching for you right now. He's reaching for everybody that's in this room right now. If you've wandered away from your purpose, if you feel like you've just done some things and maybe the shame has just got you tied up and bound yes. into a yoke, yes, yes, yes. 
that is literally keeping you from walking into your purpose. I want you to know that you're not too far gone. All you got to do is stop where you are right now and turn around. And right there, face to face, you will meet the Creator, your Father. You will meet grace. You will see mercy eye to eye. Because He loves you. He hasn't forgotten you. He hears you. He hears your heart's cry. He sees you in the midnight wrestling with your purpose. Wrestling with your past. It's time to just surrender, yes, sir. Yes, it's time yes, to surrender, yes, ma'am. Yes. Let go. Yes, yes. And give it all to God. Every part of you, all of your heart, yes, all of your soul, your yes, mind, your strength, your mind, yes, your life. Yes, come on. Just yes. surrender to yes, Him right yes, now. Yes, Lord. Amen. And in just a moment, I want you to pray these words with me. Father, forgive me. Yes. For every scheme, yes. every time I've tried to trick somebody, every time I've lied, God, for the adultery, the affairs, the abuse, the molestation, God, forgive me, God, forgive me, forgive me. I humble myself before you. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my heart to you. In every heartbeat from this moment on, God, I give it to you and I live it for you. I want to lead others to you and show them the grace and mercy you poured on me can also be poured on them. And I call you now from this day forward. Lord of my life, my King, my Father, my God, my God, and who I serve. In Jesus' name, let the church say, Amen. Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today to Redemption Power Church in Monroe, Louisiana. If you were blessed today by this service and by this feed, I want you to share the feed, but also reach out to us. We want to know that you were blessed today and how God moved in your life. We believe in prayer. We believe that God sees you. He hears you right where you are. And we know that God is doing some awesome things. If you have prayed the prayer of salvation today, Please let us know so that we can send you some vital information to help you grow and mature in the Lord and in your walk with the Lord. So thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for being faithful in His tithe and your offering during this time. Thank you for giving and continuing to give, even those of you who are being blessed via live stream. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. It is by your love and your commitment to giving that we are able to reach and do the things that we do in ministry, which is like working with the homeless. And we just thank you so much again for being faithful.